OK, granted, Belgium may be a pint-sized country, but it's big on beers and bars. Do you know the gap between Tiger and the rest is to be closed? Then other players, including yourself, will have to address that situation. And at the end of the day, choosing the right beer at the right bar is a tough assignment. There are more than 300 locally produced beers and 27,000 bars serving them. It sometimes seems that Brussels has a bar in every corner, so where to begin? Seems to me a good start is a rendezvous with a beer writer. Yep, while the rest of the world has wine writers, Belgium has beer writers. Hi Barry, how are you today? <laughs> and Danny Verhaden is one of them. As it happens, he's drinking in a bar where the choice is easy. They sell just one beer, their own. And with an alcohol content of 11%, there are strict limits. Only three. That's the rule of the house. Because uh, when you had, I, I always say first one is for the taste, the second one is a better taste, and the third one is for fun, and the fourth one is dead. That's, That's three beers. my experience, because yeah. three is enough. <laughs> Do you know what the Belgians say when they have had one strong beer? No idea. Well, they say, let's have a second one, because you cannot stand on one leg. <laughs> It's really that strong. So let's have a second one. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> this is perfect. That's what makes Belgian beers different. They have hundreds of special beers with their own unique flavours. In fact, in the beginning, it was uh, a quite local uh, story of the Belgian beers. So uh, nearly each uh, town had its own beer, and they did develop their own uh, taste with their own uh, ingredients. And while the microbreweries flourished, so did the big one, Interbrew, the maker of Stella. Yet just a decade ago, it was barely known. Suddenly they uh, started to expand. They uh, started to uh, take over Labatt, which is the, the biggest brewer of uh, Canada. Uh, then they started to take over some breweries in Eastern Europe. And uh, now they had some business in uh, Great Britain. And all of a sudden they're number two in the world. Second only to Anheuser-Busch, the American brewers of Budweiser. And yet while it's keeping pace with the world leaders, visiting into brewers like taking a step back into the past. Here at their Brussels brewery they still use oak barrels and most of them are at least 80 years old. There are 10,000 of them at this brewery alone. And that means keeping alive an ancient art. Coopers are still employed to keep the old barrels in working order. Because the company has a strict policy, no new wood. The beer must mature in old oak for up to three years. Certainly something's working. Uh, you should know that uh, Stella, which is the Lager brand of Interbrew, has become the first Lager brand in Great Britain. So you can... The most popular. It is. And you can ask questions about uh, the proudness also of the British of their own beers. When Stella, a Belgian lager, is the most popular one. <laughs> That's right. For a contrast to our first bar, Danny took us to Bruges, the country's most popular city for tourists. So Barry, we're in the Bruges Berche, which is one of the oldest pubs in the lovely town of Bruges. And this is Jan de Brown. We can consider him as nice the major. local high priest of uh, Belgian beers in Bruges. Ah. So he knows everything about Belgian beers. Unlike the last bar with its single beer, this one offers 350 and they're all Belgian. And Jan, being the high priest, likes to get to know them all. Before you must taste every beer, before. And you must remember the taste of the beers. And the most distinctive is the fruit beer. We want the brewer, he puts the real fruits in the beer. And we can put fruit, cherries, perhaps inside, give it second fermentation, second fermenting, and then we have the fruit, fruit beers. It's unique in the world. So what kind of fruit you have? Uh... Oh, we have everything. We have cherish, we have Cher even oh. banana, we have Moth, even prune uh, beer. We have peach uh, beer, ananas. Peach beer, ananas, every, every. Every kind of fruit. Mm. When you taste this beer, it gives a very, very nice, uh, flavor and aroma, this very beautiful nose, mm. smell, it smells beautiful. 
And what's the best? Amazingly, our experts lean towards one brewed in the monasteries by Trappist monks. I think uh, the Trappist beer, you're one of the best you can find in Belgium. The monks don't have any commercial no. goals, so they are limited production-wise, wise, and they just mm -hmm. take care of the quality of the beer. So you should uh, taste them all. But what, what to me, think, this is the best. It? That's the best? That's the best to me, but okay. And with that recommendation, a visit to a monastery was essential. And what an eye-opener. Monks brew beer in only six places in the world and five of them are in Belgium, there's one in Holland. This state-of-the-art brewery is the Notre Dame Saint-Rémy near Rochefort and it's managed by Father Don Jacques Emmanuel. Our first purpose is the prayer. Even so, as a secondary concern, it's still making lots of money. This is the church that beer built a four-year-old chapel right in the centre of a 13th-century monastery. And in their private moments, do the monks drink their own beer? We don't drink our beer now because uh, there is too much alcohol in it. There certainly is. The top of the range weighs in at 11.3%. So you don't have to drink it uh, um, like that. You have to be at home and, and drink it slowly. Eh? And back in Bruges, that's the advice from our experts as well. This beer you never drink. You taste this beer and slowly on and it feels good, warm inside. It's not to, to drinking, drinking quickly. And this is what I mean uh, when English people, tourists visit this place and they taste the drinking the beer. And they're coming very quickly drunk. And it's not, they give no happiness. And are you, you're very proud of Belgian beers? Yes, of course. They are the best in the world. Mm. Correct, yes. <laughs>